Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're back for Soma. Gonna be showcasing this. If you just watched the Amnesia Trilogy stuff, this will have very similar tech to Amnesia Rebirth. Uh, a lot of the prop clipping, prop flying, all that, uh, that stuff's gonna carry on over. Uh, but yeah, it completely breaks from the overall story of the other world and the orbs and all of that stuff. It's its own unique setting. And um, we'll get into what happens with Simon, our protagonist, and all that stuff. We'll watch a little bit of a, an intro, and then the run will start after that. It's nothing. It's just my brain can't stop bleeding from the accident. Here, take this. No, that, that's for later, for the scan. It's green. Ashley, I need to tell you something. Simon, please don't make this weird. No, no, it's not like that. Why now? All right, time will start in three, two, one, go. Why is there never go. enough time? So it turns out Simon was in a car accident uh, and has suffered brain damage, which is yeah, going to be starting the setup for this game. Uh, don't mind this this plug that's plugged in, but also still has this side just open. Super dangerous, and Simon's sleeping in jeans and shoes. Kind of a weird choice, but uh, as we'll get into, Simon is a very weird character. Anyways, we need to do a brain scan, and for that we have to drink some fluid, which can be in one of three spots, and it's always going to be in the last spot you check. So to just speed things up, we're going to immediately get out of bed. We're going to check our cabinet, and check the bathroom, and then open up this drawer to get our fluid. I like to call penny milk, as Simon will say. Feels like milk, but it tastes like sucking on a penny, which is just but the taste is like sucking on a penny. Sounds lovely. We're out of the apartment. I'm gonna take the subway over to Dr. Munchie's place, who's going to uh do the brain scan for us. We're gonna be spamming right click so when we get this phone call here, we can just silence it because nobody wants to answer their phone. Let's ignore that real quick. So like Rebirth kind of had this existential question of like, you know, what would you do to save your child? Um, and the, the horrors and the dreads that come along with that. This game is more about what makes a person a person, right? The whole ship of Theseus thing, if you take their brain and put it somewhere else, take their memories, put it somewhere else, um, transplant it somewhere, is it still them? That kind of question. Uh, and Simon has a real tough time grasping these concepts, as we'll come to find. So we got to go scan our brain data real quick. Dr. Munchie? Meet Dr. Munchie. Oh, hi. Didn't hear you come in. Who's Simon not actually a doctor. Dr. Well, it's, uh, just Never just something you want to find out. I'm working on it. Actually, you're helping me right now. Is this part of your thesis work? Yeah. It's a study I'm doing with my colleague, Paul Berg. We hope to design a gentle way to work with brain reconstruction to help people like you. Oh, did you uh, take the tracer fluid? Yes. Yes, I did. Great. Well, we can start whenever you're ready. Just going to hop in this chair. Uh, so we're going to get a, a quick flash here, and we're going to seemingly be teleported somewhere else. What's actually happening is this is taking a brain data scan of Simon's brain, so they can kind of diagnose what happens. But they take that brain data and put it somewhere else. You are Simon Jarrett, correct? So we're continuing a version of Simon, but we're not continuing this version of Simon. Also, yes, spoilers. Good. All files in order. Will this hurt? It's just a scan. It'll hurt about as much as getting your picture taken. Indians thought So yeah, I mean, the cabling here is just atrocious. Cables everywhere, just randomly plugged in. Cheese. 
We'll have the nice flashbangs. And once we're down in Talos, what happened? Uh, or Pathos. Talos is prey. I run too many too many games. Kind of uh, mix them all up. Hello? Anyway, once we're down here and start breaking out. Uh, and this is where the prop clipping comes into play. So by holding a, a prop close to us and then re-grabbing it, we can flip through stuff. This fire extinguisher is a little bit of a nightmare to clip with, but we're going to use this to just get our way through this door, skip the whole quest line there. Now we find out we're underwater. Whoa, big plot reveal. Before we move on, we need to uh, stick our finger in this. This kind of acts as our like healing along the way checkpoint sort of system. Uh, fun skip, you just hold back when you climb into this vent. And uh, the game thinks you just kept going along the vents, uh, so it deloads this and loads in the next part. We can just get out of bounds on top of the map and continue on. You, for some reason, didn't think this was going to be broken after watching the uh, the previous three games. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but yeah. We're going to be going out of bounds quite a bit. We're going to take this chair up for a little bit of a ride. We need to go meet Catherine. We just skipped a, a, actually quite a bit of content there. Um, kind of finding out that there's robots and that there's kind of people in robots. Um, and starting that whole thread. So Catherine's going to kind of break the news to, uh, to Simon of where he is and what's going on here. Catherine has a lot of patience to deal with Simon. And all of his questions. You never been there before? Where did you work? The Grimoire in Toronto. Is that really important? No, I mean, where did you work in Pathos 2? I don't know what that is. That's unexpected. Did you come directly from Toronto? Yeah, I did. And it was very unexpected. Have you seen any people? Like staff or field technicians? Only robots. Crazy ones. This is also strange. You're telling me. Some fun quotes mixed in here. What was that? Yeah, so this whole dome is uh, just caving in. The water's going to start leaking in. We're panicking. What do I do? What do I do? Yeah, so a lot of uh, a lot of Soma is traversing through these different sites of this underwater base. We're currently in Upsilon. We're going to make our way to Theta and Phi and Tau and Omicron. But between each of these levels are giant underwater sections, which uh, usually go about the same way every time we meet them. This is also where Simon starts to kind of see that he may not be the human that he thought he was, even if he won't comprehend it. He is in fact a robot. Be sure to turn on our flashlight. I'm gonna take this little sheet of metal and just uh, fly on out of here. There's a lot of exploring you can do, uh, little side areas that you can explore in the underwater sections. But uh, we're just gonna make our way straight to the ends by hovering away. A lot of these sections do get pretty hard to see. It's just a case of knowing the angle that you're on and trusting that if you uh, keep hovering in the right direction, you will end up where you need to be. So we're just going to make our way over into the void here. And we're looking for a green light in the distance. That's where we want to be. One, one 
thing I love about this game, even though Simon is a robot, he still continues to breathe. He doesn't need to, but just to uh, comfort himself, he will continue to breathe. Fall down a little bit. This game tries to avoid load screens by having what's known as preload triggers. So there's spots on the map that you hit that will help uh, the game to start loading in the next level. And that's very important for us to hit here. Not always, um, but this will keep the props loaded into the next map as well. If we didn't hit this and just went on to the next map, we could not keep this, uh, this little sheet of metal that we really do want to keep. It's going to be very handy for us. So even though we could have just dropped right here after the hover, um, we want to make sure that we do hit that trigger along the way. Here's our Omni tool that we very clearly picked up earlier on. Definitely didn't skip it. To uh, get past this airlock. To actually transition to the next map, we need to uh, activate this, but we don't want to be in bounds anymore. We want to get back out of bounds as quickly as we can. Right, grab this fire extinguisher, take it back to where we just came from. Pop this wall, and we're going to do a little bit of a safety save. Uh, because this hover, unlike the ones in the water, does go over the void and has a chance of going wrong. We're going to use the same sheet of metal that we flew on before, that we saved, to uh, skip the shuttle, skip repairing the shuttle and taking it down the, the tracks, and we're just going to hover over the void in the darkness and uh, hope things go the way they should. It's even scary if we just turn off the flashlight. Oh my god, I can't see anything. Oh wait, I couldn't see anything before. Oh no. So a little bit further and we should pop back in to where we can see some stuff. Not too far. Oh, there's a little bit of light. Getting close. Oh, a little bit more light. A good sign. Where we want to be. Once we get past this, uh, a lot of the map's going to be revealed. There we go. We do need to worry a little bit about height here. We need to hit a certain platform. It looks like we're going to be a little bit too high. It's perfectly fine. Very easy to lose height. It's a lot easier to drop down than it is to jump up. Kind of crouch. Stand on this ledge. Grab the ladder. And we're back in bounds. And scan our way out. So we're going to see here, we're actually going to go to a little black screen. We didn't hit the preload trigger in this map. It's going to give us that that small load screen, which is not a big deal. We don't need to keep anything here. And coming up in the next map uh, is one of my favorite quotes that Simon says. It's just, it's so ridiculous. It really shows uh, the kind of person Simon is. back in the ladder to come down and then we get to traverse through another underwater section yes how big can this ocean be really makes you think there. Anyways, we're going to grab this little 
scrap metal looking thing. And then uh, just follow this pipe on the floor. It's gonna lead us to where we need to be. Kind of a, a winding path that you take. And I think there's like a small little objective along the way. Uh, they got a little bit more lore. I'm just gonna hover over all of this. This is one where we actually need to gain quite a bit of height, so we want to either jump along the way or bring the object close to us, which make it a little, uh, a little scary. Very easy to fall off of small objects like this. Get a little too close. There are certain times like this where you have a, a real good guidance of where to go. You just follow those like green lights in a straight line. Uh, I'm pretty easy. We'll see later on there are some hovers that we do that are really blind. Um, and you, you just kind of have to know. Just get, it's real scary. If you happen to wander off the path and angle a little too far right or too far left, uh, Trying to figure out what you did is a, is a real nightmare. Okay. You did fall off, but pretty easy to get back on. So we're not over a void. There's really no harm in just hitting the ground and, and resetting the prop hover, but a little bit more height here. We could just run up the stairs at this point. It's not like super slow uh, once we've made it this far, but we can sneak into the backside of this place. By hovering up to this window or crack in the wall, whatever you want to call it, and just hit the load screen from back here. It's got our handy dandy fire extinguishers. It'll, you know, luckily they just have these all around the place. We'll let us clip through the wall. right between that. So we could just walk through that door instead of walking all the way around, but it actually like hits a, uh, a monster spawn trigger that we really don't want to deal with. So it's like a little bit slower to walk around, but saves the headache. Clip through this wall. That's going to get us up top where we can start pulling out some power plugs. But as we're going to learn about here in just a second, there is something called the WOW lurking around, which is uh, going to take an interest in us. I'm gonna start unplugging these. Let's see to unplug three of them. Doesn't matter which ones. Now nah, we're just going to run. Just run away. Just keep running. We got a little escape pod now that we've deactivated the stuff. Uh, we're gonna meet up back up with Catherine. We're gonna take over. So Catherine's just like constantly cleaning up after Simon. Just, just so much patience. It's pretty remarkable. Not much we can do here. Just got uh, get a little information on the WoW itself. How do you even know what direction we're going in? Don't worry, I'm hooked up to the navigator. We're headed for Theta. Should be a matter of minutes. I thought I was done for back there. Oh, wow. A catastrophic failure state. I, I mean, how did he get on the ship? Are you talking about the black tentacles in the engine room? I've seen them before at Upsilon. What are they? They're a manifestation of a malfunctioning station-wide artificial intelligence called the WOW. 
the what? Station wide? So we just made a powerful enemy. No, no, it's not like that. The AI isn't a persona. It doesn't feel or think like we do. It's more like, uh, it's more like a cancer. Was that the ship? Looks like your sabotage worked better than expected. Freeze for impact! Hold on, the blast is pushing <gasps> And we're dead. That is the end of the game. Not really. Uh, I do think it'd be kind of interesting if there's like a random chance that the game would just roll the credits right there. It'd be a fun little Easter egg. But we survive. It's crashed a little bit. But that's okay. We get a little rescue party. We get to meet our little robot friend. First we need to pick up our Omni tool. It's very important that I push this door up. So we're going to use this door here in just a little bit. Um, and once it gets cut open, it's going to go flying away. For whatever reason, pushing this up will cause it not to go even further. Instead of just being like a little random chance. The little robot friends. So cute. Unfortunately, I don't think we can pet them. But yeah, Doris is going to land right there. And, uh, Good job. like in the games before, when you're holding an object, you are slowed in terms of movement. So we're going to throw this ahead of us and then let go of it. So it's kind of floating on its own. Uh, and then we can move at normal speed and juggle it along the way. Well, let me pick it back up. You just continuously grab it, throw it, and, uh, and jump as well. Speed things up. It'd be a little bit tricky to get down. And then we need to make sure when we get up here to not let it hit the fence. I will despawn the door, which is not good. That fence. Uh, anyways, we need to start calling in a zeppelin. So we got to fix up some machinery here. That going. All right. Now we can go over to this terminal and actually call in the zeppelin. It's going to be our ticket out of here. And instead of waiting for it to actually land, I'm just going to take our door and go for a little adventure. A little undersea magic carpet ride. Doing this just so we can uh, start this little dialogue with Catherine early. One kind of like a thing that you do throughout this game is upgrade your Omni tool to get further and further through the levels. And it turns out your Omni tool here is uh, in need of an upgrade. Then you know how it works. We need to get a new tool chip and switch it. Care to point me in the direction of the closest tool chip storage? I think it would be easier to just take one from a robot. What? Just knock a robot over the head and steal their chips? I swear to just take their ultra variety bag of Doritos. Come on, I don't want to hurt anyone. Isn't this a bit much? It's just a robot, Simon. We're just robots, sort of. I'll get us a chip. All right, we gotta go steal some uh, some chips from our robot. No choice. Not our little robot friend. He's too cute to harm. We're gonna go take it from this other robot over here. Gotta give him a three quick zaps with the stun baton. Uh, we're gonna try to jump to block his path. So he doesn't run too far away. Uh, once you zap him three times, he's, he's always gonna fly over to this pillar. The closer you can keep the robot to this spot, the better. Got our chip. Hello, little buddy. And we're moving on with the chips. We're getting this will allow us to take the Zeppelin over to Theta. Uh, but we actually don't need to ride the Zeppelin. Thanks, Simon. It turns out. Don't be mad, okay? We do need it to actually move. It will load in the next ship? map, or ne the next part of the map, I should say. Kill a robot like that? I get attached to them 
too. I'm not a monster. But in this case, it had to be done. He was talking. I mean, he was delusional, but he seemed sincere. Present. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's fine. Was he really that different from us? It's just beginning to sink in. I mean, really sink in. I'm a robot. Didn't we cover this already? This is where Simon kind of starts really thinking about his situation. You know, the Zeppelin's supposed to be a good ride, though. Start asking these type of questions and... and dealing with that situation. Uh, it's supposed to be a back and forth between Simon and Catherine here. But the way this game handles dialogue is it has to be proximity based. So um, we're going to run away from Catherine here because the Zeppelin's kind of slow. So we're going to hear Simon's dialogue, but we're not going to hear Catherine's side of things, her rebuttal. So it's going to seem really awkward. You get one half of the conversation. Um, and we do need the Omni tool back from the Zeppelin itself. But we're going to go prep a couple things before it lands by just hovering over this void. Uh, the map's going to change here in just a second or two. Probably actually have too much height, which is fine. Better to be too high up than too low. It is possible to fall into the void here. But uh, we are just fine. Gonna run ahead and make our way to Theta. So I prep, uh, prep the door. Simon should start questioning things here in just a second. Yeah. yeah. It may look like we're inside the map at the moment, but we're not. So there's a certain path that we need to take here. And then uh, nice way to clip back in bounds. Whenever you're on an outside map, it's a little harder to find what is inside the map and what's outside. So it all kind of looks the same. Let me slip back in here. Okay. Now we're back in the playable space. We're going to make our way to the big door. The reason this is such an important trick to do is this door takes a long time to open. So having it uh, pre-opened at a time, usually have pre-works, uh, is really, really nice. We're going to break this off and use that here in just a second. Pull this out, twist it, push it back. Pull this. We should have enough time. Um, depending on how fast you get over here, you can set this other thing up as well. Um, I'm not gonna risk it today. I'm going back. But we need the Omni tool, so I'm gonna run back to where the Zeppelin lands and pick it up. Uh, as you can see, that door is opening in like multiple layers. It, it, it takes a real long time. Uh, if you get over there like really, really, really fast, you can set up the second part, uh, which we're going to use to do a skip. I just didn't want to risk it today. But once Catherine gets a little closer, we can actually hear the final bits of her dialogue. Alright, got our Omni tool, and we can continue on into Theta. So we're going to use that little panel that we ripped off, and uh, all we're going to do with this is wedge it into this door. To help speed up the airlock here, what we're going to do is start the scan and then jump out and back in. This is going to keep the door open for us. Jump out and back in. And that just kind of helps speed things up a little bit. It can also result in the, the door on the other side of this being not where it should be. Uh, it doesn't happen every time, but yeah. Hello? 
Let me just get like an extra door here. Kind of weird. So we're immediately going to get outside of Theta. We don't want to do the puzzle here. It is really slow and honestly not a puzzle I'm a fan of casually. Just going to go up through the ceiling. Need to hit a low trigger on this air vent. It is also really easy to get stuck here. Be safe and wait for the load screen to actually go through. Okay. It's going to trigger the map to change. I'm going to walk on this invisible floor. I'm going to do a huge jump around the corner all the way down here. Don't have to worry about dying from a fall. A little damage, but you know, it's just fine. Wee. Let's skip all of Theta. We need to slip back inside. And this is a little jump scare that we can't avoid. This monster's going to come give us a big hug for doing such a good job. There's no point in running. This is what ends the map. A little cutscene. Um... Uh, well, the cutscene itself is what it is. I always like to point out Simon's gaming setup, you know, like most people watching this are probably gamers. I have to imagine. Uh, so it's nice to look at some gaming setups every now and then. And oh man, his is so nice. I get jealous of it every single time. Unfortunately, it's like a... A long time to get into it. It's okay. Yeah, here we go. We got the uh some sort of Xbox over here. We got the nice monitor set up. We got the extension cord. Oh, it is just looking so nice. Like couples do. You don't want me? Yes. Of course you do. What happened? You fell in love. back in Theta. That was all just a dream. I'm just take herself a little raspberry jelly. Not connected to the shadow from Amnesia at all. Just happens to look somewhat similar. And now we need to leave Theta. We were trying to get over to Omicron. And what better way to leave a map than to just literally leave the map? A little bit of a a risky one. We need to clip through this wall and then immediately stand on the other side so we don't fall in the void. Get up on top of the map and then make our way to the end. Be a little careful where you where you jump here. Want to jump off the map? Don't want to get stuck on stuff. Just traverse the out of bounds. And with traversing the out of bounds, there's actually an invisible wall uh, up here that we have to just do a full strafe jump around. But right here, we can't progress any further. Just jump around it. And drop on this vent so we can pop through the map. We got a nice object hover ride over to the end. This is going to be our ticket back outside into the open waters. It's actually one of the open waters that we don't do an object hover for. We do need an object, but not for flying with. Flush down the drain. So there are typically two different props that you can use uh, for this map. There's a very risky one that's a little bit faster because it's a smaller prop so you move a little faster when carrying it. Um, well, that's not the way we're going to do this. We're going to play it a little bit safer uh, mainly because I just like the object. Uh, so yeah, we could pick up one of these pieces of sheet metal and bring this with us. 
but we're going to go pick up Bomberman. He's just hanging out underwater. I don't know why, because bombs don't typically work too well underwater, but hey, he's down here. Omicron is definitely one of the more memorable parts of the game. Um, where we start dealing more with Simon's inability to understand the whole mind copying, duplication, cloning process. Around the area, there's these little robots that if you look at them, they look just like Bomberman. I don't know why, but he's hanging out in here. So we're going to take this with us. Uh, once again, the holding the object makes us really, really slow, so we try to juggle it in the air if we can. Bring it along this very scary scaffolding. Now we're just going to clip right into this doorway. Not only is Omicron one of the more memorable parts of the game, it's also one of the hardest parts for the speedrun. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff you have to do here, and the checkpoint is not generous. There's a, there's a ton that can go wrong, and if you do any of it wrong, you have to do it all again. But in, in Omicron, we need to get ourselves a new body so we can survive even heavier pressure as we descend into the darkness of the water. We're going to go around getting some spare parts so we can fix up a body. Typically, you're supposed to go find the body first, and then you get the task to repair it. Uh, we want to get all the parts first so we can set things up and just go fast. Do a whole bunch of clips. This is part one. Eat, use this to hover. scan so here we're going to be picking up part number two but we also need a, a handy dandy item to clip out with so a cool trick you can do to skip the whole puzzle here is just look through the gap that gets opened pick up part two I'm going to try to do Two clips with this little tray. Set it up. The smaller the prop is, the harder it is to clip with. Uh, having the bigger items is definitely a benefit, but hey, we got those pretty quick. Another hover up to the top floor. And we just need one more clip. Um, and then we're kind of at a, a checkpoint, so. Got through just fine. Cool. We need our third and final piece of the suit. Is guarded by the spooky monster. We're just gonna sneak past, grab it, and run away. Goodbye. We can scratch and kind of jiggle against this corner. Okay. This is a. Uh... Oh, we did get a checkpoint running past that monster. It's still a very difficult section to pull off, so we're going to do a little safety save. We've got to do a couple jumps over the void. Be a little bit safe about it. Give me a little more 
height. Around this corner. Hey. That was the hard jump. Got it first try. Let's go. Okay. Flip back in. Say hello to Catherine. And this is kind of where we get the quest line of like, oh, hey, we need a more advanced body. And survive deeper pressures. So, so you know, go do that, Simon. Luckily, we already have all the parts, uh, but it is very easy to soft lock this part if we uh, don't do it correctly. Because we're doing everything out of order. I mean, I'm kind of in a suit already. That's been bothering me too. You know how you were transferred from Vancouver? Toronto. From then to now. How could I forget? Okay, so we do it again. You want to send me to the future? No, you idiot. I want to transfer your mind into a new body. What? Look, we already know it can be done. We don't need to make it a big deal. It is a big deal, Kath. It's a huge fucking deal. There's got to be something else that can take us down there. But Dunbat at Theta was the only vessel that could take that pressure, and you saw what happened. Then think of something else. Simon, please. You don't have to switch this instant. Just play along for now. If we find something else, then great. If not... I'm not promising anything. Thank you, Simon. Have a look around the room. This is where they would keep the power suits, if there are any left. All right, let's set up a bunch of stuff. We're going to open the, the exit out of here. We're going to put a box in here. Start up the terminal and then touch this body. Very important we do this in this order so we don't soft lock. Okay, while that's happening, we're going to open this door that is normally going to shut and lock forever. But, ooh, this is... Uh, a little scary. Can I? We really want to stick this chair in here if we can. Unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna go the way I want it to. Uh, oop, that is real, real bad. Get back over here. Need this to be wedged in here. Don't waste time, Simon. Activate the power suit already. <laughs> I get I get it, Catherine. I'm wasting time. I get it. Not to be mean. Too slow for her. Might might be able to get a oh, uh, that's just gonna push it out, huh? Might need to go through that part again. We have that we have that safety save in place. Some very experimental stuff here. One more push and see if we can get something going. Nah, we'll just load. We'll just load. We'll back up. Great physics. This will uh lock behind us. Alright, you know what, Catherine? I agree. Don't waste time. like her mindset bit unfortunate there but uh, that's the way speedruns go sometimes I just completely missed the jump Ooh. Here, do this all again. Nail it first try once again. Easy peasy. Let's listen to this little bit of dialogue. And then uh not mess up the door. Is this Omicron? Everything is so basic, so limited. I hope 
it's not the Amatul falling apart. Okay, we need to find you a power suit. You know, so we can go into the abyss without ending up like a recycled can of soda? You think we'll find one that fits me? I mean, I'm kind of in a suit already. That's been bothering me too. You know how you were transferred from Vancouver? Toronto. From then to now. How could I forget? Okay, so we do it again. You want to send me to the future? No, you idiot. I want to transfer your mind into a new body. What? Look, we already know it can be done. We don't need to make it a big deal. It is a big deal, Kath. It's a huge fucking deal. There's got to be something else that can take us down. No matter how many times this gets told to Simon, not only just watching the same thing twice, but kind of goes through the whole dilemma uh, multiple times throughout the game. He just does not understand it, unfortunately. I know a lot of people love the story in this game, um, but Simon definitely becomes pretty unsufferable. By, by the end of a run. Especially once you sit through it multiple times. Alright, open the door. Put the box in here. Seeing all this for the first time. Definitely haven't done this already. Click the body. Be a little bit more careful about the door. Alright, wedge it in there. Now we can start repairing the body. Putting all the parts in. battery picked up in and then put the uh the oil in oh, i'm gonna activate the suit and now the reason not sticking this door uh or this chair in this door is that we can leave and this is going to allow us to skip quite a bit of the cutscene here there's actually two cutscenes that we need to skip one before the body and one after and a cool thing about this is it has kind of an audio diary skip so Catherine and Simon are going to talk a bunch, but if we click this, it's going to bypass all of that, and we can go back and just resume the actual gameplay segment of Omicron. I'm just going to go sit in the chair. We need to loop back the activity manifested by your current. That's everything. You can all right. This is going to take a brain data scan of us, just like at the beginning of the game. Don't worry. We're Simon in uh, Toronto. Ended up in Faith those two. I'm going to do essentially the same thing, but we're going to transfer into the body that we just repaired. When I say transferred, we're actually just making a copy. But the Simon that we were just playing as is still in that chair. And we're just going to run away. There's a little bit more story that goes on here. We're going to go skip it using that same diary. No, I, it just... Why was it still talking? It's the same like before. Catherine, why was he still talking? That's how it works. You know that. What do you mean? You know it's not magic. Run away. So now we can leave Omicron. I'm going to try to set up for a skip. This one isn't super vital for the run. Sometimes it doesn't work, and that's okay. It's a free one you get to go for. Got to make sure to pick up the Omni tool on the way out. Don't want to forget that. Okay. As this is filling up water so we can go out to the, the ocean once again, we're going to clip back in. As it's unloading the map, we're going to wedge yourself out here and just wait for things to change. And wait for the world to change. It just saves a little bit of walking and waiting for the airlock to uh, actually open up. Get to the elevator right away. All right, this is a uh, every runner's favorite segment of the game. Yeah. It's the part where we get a little bit of a break. Uh, unfortunately, this is unskippable. It's a little journey down to the bottom of the ocean. So Simon and Catherine are going to have a little bit of a talk. 
on the way down. It's dumb luck, right? And I woke up in the right body. It's a redundant copy. I'll never experience And this is why we needed to switch into a new body, or copy yourself into a new body, so we can actually survive the pressure. All the other body would just crack and fall apart and be no good. Our main mission from here on out of the game, now that we have this new body and we can go further down, is to find and shoot the Ark out into space. The Ark is a collection of all of the brain data that they've scanned. Pretty much everyone that works at Pathos has a brain data scan on it. Um, so one thing that we completely glimpse over in the run, that is very easy to forget about for the run, um, is the fact that between Simon taking the first brain data scan and waking up in Pathos 2 is that the surface world is completely destroyed. Um, humanity on the surface has been like completely wiped out. I believe it's from a meteor. I, I might be wrong. It's been a, it's been a minute. Um, but anyways, no one up there is alive. And the only remaining people on Earth are in Pathos, but most of them have either died or turned into robots. Um, we were kind of like more or less the last remaining person traveling through here. Um, so for humanity to survive on, we're going to take the arc full of brain data and launch it into space. Now, Salivator Ride's not fully a cutscene. Um, there's a little bit of repair that we have to do for it. There's a comet. There we go. But I, I knew it was something like that. An asteroid, meteor, comet. Close enough. Also, coming up, once we get down to the outside of Tau, is uh, a very infamous hover for us. It is definitely one of the rougher ones. Everyone's gone. All the people still left are digital copies trapped in computers at the bottom of the sea. Because even for me, it is very difficult to see where I'm going. It's one of the blind hovers. And it's a two-part blind hover. Is uh is that the one where you're like hovering across like the dark ocean floor for like five minutes? Yes. <laughs> that one is terrifying and why I don't want to run this game. <laughs> it's not too bad, but it, it definitely is one of those if you like veer off path, um, you just have to like know how long you're supposed to hover for and be like, oh, I, okay, I missed it and I need to reset this trick. Otherwise, you could keep going forever. It's a skip that usually I even have to look at my OBS preview with a gamma filter on it, so it's super bright. Not to know what's going on, but hey, the uh, elevator shut down. Got to fix it up real quick. There's a, a little bit of a fun trick that you can do once you get everything fixed here. It doesn't save any time, but uh, you know, if you aren't taking a bathroom break or something like that. Uh, when you go to sit here, if you just like tap back a whole bunch, you don't actually sit in this chair. You just hold it. You can, you can just hold this the whole time and wait for the next cutscene to play, or you can just sit back down. It doesn't, uh, doesn't really matter. So I kind of get a little perspective from Catherine as well. So we're going to have a break between the uh, Simon and Catherine cutscene and I'm talking. Get a little unexpected visitor. It's the wow. Woo, we did it. 
pretty cool guy. Anyways, we're going to black out and wake up sometime later as we continue our descent. Our dark descent into the water. A little bit longer and then we'll be uh, on the ocean floor. So one question I do get asked quite a bit when I'm running this is it's kind of about the, the lore behind the WoW and what it is and, and the storyline. It's one of those things that I've skipped over for so long. It's been a while since I've played uh, the game for, for the story. Uh, I, I don't really remember the whole deal with it. Badly. Hey, we hit the bottom. I'm for the fun. I always like the thing of this place is uh, in Spongebob when they go below Bikini Bottom to the other place I can never think of the name. Rock um, Bottom. <laughs> rock Bottom, yes. That's what I always think this area is. Very a Rock Bottom. We're going to take our handy dandy little container over here. I'm going to do a little safety save. This is uh, definitely a trick. thing just happened to disappear sometimes it'll float away okay so we're gonna take this we're going to go way up in the water I always want to say sky but there's no sky underwater that won't make any sense go way way up and the reason we're doing this is we're flying through the water here um, there are storms that if you hit the triggers for the storm will slow you down and make it much harder to see. And by going up high enough, we can get around hitting those triggers. And we also just need some general height to get past certain uh, collision and terrain on the map. So we're up pretty high. We're going to take a fun little trip. Now it is really hard to see, for sure. Um, but we need to try to find a very specific spot on the map. We mentioned it a while ago about preload triggers and hitting those so that we can keep our prop into the next map. Uh, that's what we're going to attempt to do here. So we can keep this little container with us into the next one. If things go wrong, it's not the end of the world. There is a backup strat we can do. And it should all be fine, but ideally we shouldn't have any problems. Is, uh, definitely like the biggest obstacle to learning this run. Just knowing where you have to go here. And, and like I said, if, if you just veer off path somehow, uh, it's very easy to get lost and not realize you got lost. Actually, could have gone up a little bit higher, but this is going to be fine. A little bit more right. Should be right up here. We're looking for this 90 degree bend right there. We want to drop here. Now the preload trigger is just off to the right. We can hit. This is part two. 
Uh, if you have played this game casually and you remember the underwater spider cave section uh, that is on the left there, the little green lights that we're bypassing, what that is. But I really don't like that part of the game. Um, not a big fan of spiders, especially not underwater spiders. So even if this didn't save time, at least to get you past that part. So we got to go a little bit further. Right. Pretty, we're doing a pretty low hover here. Good. Luckily, this game is not Subnautica, and there's no Leviathan's going to pop up and try to eat us. I really have to worry about that. I'm just going to follow this uh, this pathway of lights. We could drop now, but let's stay up above. Yeah, we found Tau. No issues there. Thankfully. The reason we want to bring this container with us all the way to the airlock. That as this is proceeding into the next map, we're actually going to use this to... I didn't swipe. Uh, clip. Out of bounds, where'd he go? Hello? You can just clip while in the water. I'm gonna wait for it to actually uh, drain a little bit. I just find it makes things a tad bit easier. Now as the map changes here, this pipe's just gonna disappear. Now we'll be outside on the new map. But there is an alternate version of the skip where you uh, won't do that clip and you do a different one to get out here. I'll have to show it, showcase it today. Okay, so in Tau is where the Ark resides. We need to go grab it. I can jump up here. Simon doesn't want to jump today. Okay. Makes me a little worried because uh, the bigger jump, the bigger trick, is this one here. Okay. This is another jump over the void. And we need to do a strafe jump. So we're going to jump out and then hook left. And land on an invisible platform. And from there, we're going to jump to another invisible platform. So we can get further into Tau. Alright, that went pretty smoothly. Thank goodness. It's uh, definitely one of the harder jumps in the game to make. So this is going to allow us to jump right into the room. I um, can't remember this lady's name, but she's actually the last surviving human. For us, she's just a ghost, so we're going to just... Go ahead and disable that life support real quick. Uh, now that's the arc that we could pick up and continue with, but now that we can pick up the arc, we actually want to do it from out of bounds so we don't have to uh, carry it around through the map. And we need to drop down to the basement. Oop, almost just walked off the map. Okay. So yeah, normally you'd put it in the elevator and like go through the map and then pick it up here. But you just drop down to the final door. I'm just waiting for this door to break open from all the water. There's a a little a little exploit we get to do on the next part that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I enjoy that it's there. So once we attach this cargo, uh, we're going to swipe the Omni tool twice. You only need to swipe it once, but swiping it twice actually starts these pipes a little bit faster. Normally you have to wait quite a bit of time for them to actually have water coming out of them. But uh, two swipes and they 
for whatever reason, start sooner. Which means we can leave the level sooner. We really have like two maps left to go. Um, this is our last time being in the open water. But I'm sure you can kind of guess what's going to happen here. The arc is on its path to the cannon that's going to shoot it in the space. Uh, and this is typically where you go and deal with the WoW and resolve that storyline. Uh, once again, we tend to skip it, so I, I don't actually remember what happens with that whole story. We're going to take this thing of metal, whatever you may want to call this, through the ceiling. And this is going to allow us just to follow it all the way to the end. So instead of running off to the side and, and going through the whole wow section, we're just gonna take this straight to the end. Follow the arc closely behind it. Then all we have to really do is deal with uh, getting the arc into space and the fallout that happens with that. You're gonna see on the left, we're just bypassing some stuff. A lot of pretty lights. Now uh, this here on the left at the moment, that's uh, where you deal with the WoW itself. During this bar, I always feel like a tour guide. <laughs> Coming up on your left, this is the home of the WoW. Feel free to take pictures. I'm kind of sort of angling off towards the uh, the entrance of Tau, or by rather, we we're just in Tau. right at the end. That's the big cannon that's going to launch it into space. Just have to get the arc there. I can actually use that little thing of metal that we brought with us to open up the, the hatch a little bit quicker. Decent time save. But just because this is the last map does not mean it's not broken in any way. We do have other trick that we have to do. Just gotta wait for the airlock to go through. And we can proceed. So now we need to clip past this door. Uh, and to do that, we're going to clip past something else instead. We're going to take this little book. Uh, not a great prop, but it's really the only one we have to work with here. We're going to try to crouch jump into a little corner. Up, up through the corner. And then we need to clip the book through the same corner by just bringing it closer and further away from us with the mouse wheel. I'm going to use this to hover past the airlock. I don't need to worry about fall damage. Plug in Catherine. We can begin the process of launching the arc into space. Guess you won't have to. Not after this is over. Look how comfy this chair is. It's got armrest. No cup holders, though. 
unfortunately. Comfortable? As good as it's gonna get. Okay, I'll activate the seat. You should be able to use the machines to load the bullet you assembled. How do you operate this thing? So we we're, we're supposed to put the arc into a giant bullet. Okay. You know, it's usually how you launch stuff out of a giant gun. Uh, we skipped that whole part, obviously. But now we're going to load up the bullet. Super easy crane game. Just click and point. Or point and click. And zoom in even if you don't need to. From here, the only things remaining are clicking the button and dealing with slamming. Oh, he's not gonna make it. Woo! There is the arc. But Simon has yet to realize that he lost the coin flip. Mogus. No. We were getting on the ark. I saw it. Who knew this was uh lay it among us? Yeah, I saw. Then why are we still here? Simon, I can't keep telling you how it works. You won't listen. You know why we're here. You were copied onto the ark. You just didn't carry over. You lost the coin toss. We both did. Just like Simon and Omar Khan, just like the man who died in Toronto a hundred years ago. No, this is bullshit. We came all this way. We launched the ark. I know it sucks, but our copies are up there. Catherine and Simon are both safe on the Ark. Be happy for them. Are you crazy? We're gonna die down here with those fuckers living at large on a spaceship. They're not us. They're not us. I'm sorry you feel that way, Simon. I'm proud of what we did. We made sure that something of the hundreds of thousands of years of human history survived, that something lives on. No, 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 no. Fuck this. <laughs> A little potty mouth. You, Catherine, you lied. And I believed in you. I trusted you. You said we're getting on the fucking ark. We are on the ark, you idiot. I didn't lie. I can't be responsible for your goddamn ignorance. You now, Simon is all alone at the bottom of the ocean. Catherine? The power is going out in the station. Uh, we have a fun time. We're going to see the credits, but the run is actually not over. We have a little bit left. We got to play a little Minecraft RTX mode. Uh, it's one of the few runs that uh, does not stop at the credits. There's a little bit of gameplay after them, so we can skip them. He's going to go punch some trees real quick. Is this? Did it work? So this is the other Simon. This is the one that won the coin flip. This is the Ark. We are floating on the server in space. So we're gonna go build a, a dirt house with Catherine real quick. I always thought it'd be really cool if this game just gave you one of the two endings um, and it was just like random which one you got. I understand why they do it this way, <clears throat> show both sides, but I think it'd be like an interesting experiment. Like, oh, you know, you're talking to your friend, like, oh, I got the bad ending. It's like, oh, I, I made it to the arc. What are you talking about? A little bit further. Mm. 
Hey, we meet up with Catherine finally. Once it fades to black here, that will be time. And there we go, time. GG. GG. And we get to see the Ark just floating away in space. The last remnants of humanity living on. Get a little backdrop of the surface world being destroyed. Yeah, there you go. That is Soma with plenty of glitches. If you like this run at all, uh, I do have like glitchless versions and the whole Amnesia trilogy, all fictional games, the Penumbras, Amnesia, and Soma done together uh, if you're looking for that. And we do a fictional games anthology run, which is all those seven games every Friday on my channel. So if you want to come watch that, you can hang out. And then once the bunker comes out in March, we'll have to be adding that in. An eighth game it should be interesting to see how much longer this gets. Wait, it's out in Third March? Day. Yes. Cool. Uh, I believe it's HPL3, so we should have prop clips, prop hover in that game as well, which should be interesting. It's already a four-hour run to do all seven of these games. Who knows how much longer it's going to get to. But thank you guys for having me. Um, it was fun to show off Prey Moon Crash and Prey Randomizer last week, these games this week, and I'll be back for Bioshock on Monday for HGQ. Awesome games done quick. Um, if you, if you like any of those runs or more, I run tons and tons of games just like Dices does. Uh, Thank you. Hop on over. Stream every night except for Mondays, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern to about 2 a.m. If you have questions about this run or any of the others that I do or just want to hang out, I'd be happy to have you.